Coming into the 2022 NFL Draft, there were a lot of people debating on who was the best quarterback truly in this draft class, as for the most part, this was one of the more unpredictable quarterback draft classes we've ever seen for the most part, and nobody really knew who was the best quarterback in this class, and for the most part, nobody could see a quarterback going top 10 in this draft, and for the most part, that's pretty, you know, unheard of nowadays, because every draft for the most part nowadays has a quarterback going top 10 at latest for the most part. Now, up until the 2022 NFL Draft, it had been a while since you've seen a quarterback first go off the board into the 20s, the late first round in the 20s. But the 2022 NFL Draft, that's exactly what happened. Looking at this class two years later, it was unpredictable, but I don't think anybody thought it would be this bad to this point. A lot of the guys I'm going to be talking about in this video today are either backups or some of these guys are even in the UFL already out of the league. But join me in today's video and we're going to take a look back at the 2022 quarterback draft class and how it's aged so far. Spoiler alert, not too good as I said. We're going to start off with Mr. Irrelevant himself. Or I don't think this guy's Mr. Irrelevant anymore. I kind of feel like it's disrespectful to call him Mr. Irrelevant now because this guy is far from irrelevant at this point. But the last pick in the NFL draft went to the 49ers and they drafted none other than Brock Purdy. Let's be completely honest for a second here. Purdy was never expected to play a down in the NFL for the most part as a starter, never mind even a backup unless something happened to both starting quarterbacks for the 49ers. Oh wait, that's exactly what happened. Week 2 of the NFL season, Trey Lance would break his leg and a couple weeks later, Jimmy Garoppolo would break his foot during the game against the Dolphins. In comes Brock Purdy who would go on one of the best runs, the best Cinderella runs. Well, is it really Cinderella run at this point because he's proven himself pretty confident, pretty capable at this point. He would start the next 5 games for the 49ers and in those 5 games he threw over 1000 yards and 4 touchdowns and 13 interceptions leading them to a playoff victory over the Seahawks and also the Dallas Cowboys before unfortunately in the NFC Championship game he had an elbow injury that would put him out for the rest of the season or the rest of the playoff game you, you pretty much get the point. That now meant the 49ers had a dilemma on their hands. Jimmy Garoppolo was going either way but Trey Lance this is the same guy that he invested big first round picks into having for their future but Brock Purdy just came out of nowhere and led the team to the playoffs and almost to the Super Bowl if he didn't get hurt so like I said the 49ers now had a huge dilemma on their hands so do they go with the guy who just went on the historic playoff run for the 49ers for Mr. Irrelevant or do they go with the guy who they spent big round picks investing into it was going to be a hard choice, but in the end, the 49ers would choose Brock Purdy, which meant that Trey Lance got traded. In his first year as a full-time starter for the 49ers, he would throw for over 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions, making his first Pro Bowl in 2023 and leading the 49ers to the playoffs in the Super Bowl, where unfortunately they came up short against the Kansas City Chiefs in overtime. Call him a system quarterback, call him whatever you want. This guy as a Mr. Irrelevant pick has done something the other Mr. Irrelevants haven't done. He stayed on the roster and a lot of Mr. Irrelevant picks haven't done that. I mean, look at every Mr. Irrelevant pick over the last 20 years. None of these guys have amounted to anything. I mean, Ryan Suckup, he's the outlier outside of Brock Purdy for the most part. He's been a solid kicker for the NFL to this point. But out of that, yeah, none of these Mr. Irrelevant picks have done much of nothing. Brock Purdy, on the other hand, has managed to make something out of nothing. And he's now started in the NFL and arguably, arguably in my opinion, a top 10 quarterback. It shouldn't be arguable, but somehow it is. But Purdy has my respect because this guy had to grind to get his spot. I mean, he might have got it because of some injuries, but he still had to work for it. This guy had to work in practice, he even stay on the team, had to work, you know, through the cuts. Because like I said, a lot of Mr. Irrelevance, you know, don't stay on the team long, obviously. And numbers show this, Mr. Irrelevant has the lowest, obviously, chance of making the team out of any pick in the NFL draft for the most part. And it makes sense. They're called Mr. Irrelevant for a reason for the most part. Maybe Brock Purdy is the guy to break that moniker. Maybe I'm looking at somebody right now in the 2024 NFL Draft who's going to be picked last. And they may be the one to break that moniker this year. Talking about you, Mr. Irrelevant. I don't know who you are, but I'm looking at you right now. Guess what? You're going to be an All-Pro. Speaking into existence. 
Just a couple Boxing picks before Brock Purdy would be Thompson. Skylar Thompson at a Kansas State. Going to the Miami Dolphins. Fires. Now, this is another guy who was in. supposed to play Thompson a single game in the NFL season the in 2022. However, after injuries to two with the concussions, and then Teddy Bridgewater, Skylar Thompson is putting the action. He will play in seven games in 2022, throwing over 500 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. He would also play in a playoff game in 2022 after the continuous injuries to Tua and obviously Brock Purdy, where in that game he threw over 200 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. I mean, not bad considering it was his first playoff game in his first NFL season as the quarterback three for the most part. So, you know, not bad, but obviously stats wise it's not really all that good either for the most part now i stood up a single game in 2023 as mike white was the backup and tua thankfully did stay healthy for the most part so really there's not really much to say about skylar thompson to this point but the steelers in the seventh round 201st overall would be chris olandico i know i said that name wrong for the most part there's not really much at all to say about him for the most part he hasn't really done anything for the most part to make this segment of the video longer, I guess I'll go over his college career. Coming out of Sigles High School in Florida, Chris Solonica was a three-star recruit, and he had offers from a number of schools, including South Alabama, Toledo, Nebraska, Temple, and Iowa State. He would commit to the University of South Florida. He would only play eight games at the University of South Florida before he transferred to Sanford University. In his 2019 season, he went 4-3, playing in 12 games, passing for 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions, while also rushed for 91 yards on the ground and 8 touchdowns. And in 2021, he transferred to South Dakota State University, where he played in 15 games, going 11-4 as a starter, passing for 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. He was taken by the Steelers in the 7th round, as I said, but he didn't last long as he was cut after the preseason and he signed to the Kansas City Chiefs practice squad. To this point, he has seen a couple of games in the preseason, but for the most part, he has done nothing else whatsoever. However, this guy has two Super Bowl rings for the Kansas City Chiefs just by being on the practice squad, so good for him, I guess. Haven't played a single game to this point in the regular season, but he has two rings. That's all that matters in my opinion. Now we're going to get interesting. In the 5th round, 144th overall, the Commanders would take Sam Howell out of the University of North Carolina. Sam Howell's draft stock dropped tremendously. This guy was projected to be the best quarterback in the draft class, without a doubt for the most part, and some people expected him to be a top 10 pick. However, his draft stock tumbled during the 2021 season for college football. In his 2020 season at the University of North Carolina, Sam Howell threw for over 3,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions, while also having a 68% percent completion percentage but in 2021 his numbers would drop tremendously after having a 68 completion percentage in 2020 it dropped down to 62 in 2021 and then his touchdowns would drop to 24 and then his interceptions increased to 9 from 7 from 2020 most part a lot of sam house's criticisms would be warranted for the most part after having two straight good years at the university of north carolina why did after 2021 everybody decided for sam howe that he wasn't that guy now, it is fair to point out that Sam Howell lost a number of his weapons in the 2021 NFL Draft for the most part. That was the same draft that Daz Newsome, Michael Carter, Diami Brown, and Javante Williams were all in. So Sam Howell had just lost basically all those guys in that one draft, leaving him without basically any bona fide weapons now. So his stats dropped because of that. But what were some, you know, skill criticisms about Sam Howell that turned a lot of teams off? For the most part, Sam Howell didn't have the best arm strength. He had very, you know, okay arm strength. Nothing too crazy for the most part. And then he held the ball way too long. And that is something you saw clearly during the 2023 NFL season. Held the ball way too long, took way too many sacks, and not to mention he threw a lot of interceptions. I just jumped right into the 2023 NFL season, so we might as well continue from there. But Sam Howell's 2023 season was nothing short of a disaster for the most part. He had a very good start in his first two games, but then in the game against the Buffalo Bills, he fell apart, throwing four interceptions and zero touchdowns in that game. The interception for Sam Howell would continue to be a problem as during that same season, he threw 21 interceptions in total. 21 interceptions. That's crazy. I think Sam Howell has a lot of potential, but he just took way too many sacks and did just way too many things wrong in 2023. Holding the ball too long, being inaccurate. Like I said, a lot of problems he has for the most part were because of his own problems. Can it be fixed? 
yes, but for the most part, they were definitely still real problems for him. Now, with the rumors of the commander drafting the quarterback in the 2024 NFL Draft, they would trade Sam Howell to the Seahawks, and they would later before that acquire Marcus Mariota. Really, I'm not sure what's next for Sam Howell. He's probably going to be a backup for the Seahawks for the time being. There's a chance down the line he could be the starter depending on what the Seahawks do at quarterback in the NFL Draft, but I wouldn't put it past him. I think he's going to get another chance to be a starter someday due to the potential he showed in 2023. Fourth round, 187th overall at a Western Kentucky, the Patriots would take Bailey Zappe. Now, this was a really weird pick at the time because they just drafted Mac Jones a year prior, and this left a lot of people asking, what are the Patriots doing? Now, it would make sense maybe two years later, but then again, it still doesn't make sense for the most part. Jones would struggle a lot in 2022 to the point where Bailey Zappe would come in for a few games after he got benched. Not to mention, he would also come in for Bailey Zappe after Mac Jones got injured himself for the most part. Zappe would play in four games in 2022, throw for over 700 yards, five touchdowns, and three interceptions. Then in 2023, after Mac Jones was benched, he would play in 10 games, throw for over 1,000 yards, six touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Now, do not believe any rumors during the draft season. They're going to get you. They're going to smoke screen you. This is exactly what the Patriots are doing. There have been some rumors that they are not going to take a quarterback in the 2024 NFL Draft. Do not believe anything right now. Do not believe them. They're going to take a quarterback. They promise you they're going to take a quarterback. But Zappe right now is probably going to be the backup or third string practice squad guy. I'm not really sure how that's going to go. But in all likelihood, this guy is not going to be a starter. Their rookie quarterback in 2024 is going to be a starter, whether it's Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or even JJ McCarthy because he's been getting a lot of hype lately, which is warranted in my opinion, but who knows. Taking 94th overall out of Ole Miss would be Matt Corral after the Panthers traded up. Me personally, I thought Matt Corral was one of the better quarterbacks in this draft class. I thought he had the most potential out of anybody in this draft class. There was just something about Matt Corral that I liked about him for the most part. But looking at it a couple years later, maybe I was wrong to like him so much. Matt Corral in the end played in a really gimmicky RPL type of offense at Ole Miss for the most part and overall he had very pretty much average skills as a quarterback for the most part. Now is it fair to say that considering he wasn't given a chance by a single team he played for? Maybe unfair, but in the end, a lot of these things are true if you just watch him at Ole Miss for the most part. The Panthers would trade up to get Matt Corral. However, during the preseason, he got injured and would miss the entire preseason and regular season after this. Now, Matt Corral actually made the roster in 2023. However, a day later, he was waived and he would later be claimed by the New England Patriots. However, problems would arose for Matt Corral on September 9th, 2023, as he showed it to the team's facility and he left without notice, and then he would not report to the team for two consecutive days, and then eventually, on September 18th, 2023, he was released. He did sign back to the practice squad after clearing waivers, however, it was reported the next day that he would no longer be signing with the practice squad. Whatever happened there, I don't know. And then on February 13, 2024, he signed up with the Birmingham Stallions of the UFL Football League. Corral, unfortunately, will probably never get the chance that proved me and a lot of people wrong about what I said about him after this, saying that in the end, he was a pretty average quarterback when you really think about it. It took me a while to figure that out, but I guess I figured it out now for the most part. I will say though, I am eager to see what he does in the UFL, so I will be looking out for that for the most part to see what exactly he can cook up. Taken in the third round, 86th overall by the Tennessee Titans was Malik Willis, and he's had a bit of a downfall that nobody probably expected to this point. A lot of people fell in love with Mac Willis due to his dual threat ability. However, he had so much hype. Why did he drop so far in the NFL draft? Willis played in a pretty much gimmicky offense at Liberty for the most part. He didn't really play any big competition for the most part, and a lot of people were worried about if his talent was going to be able to translate to the NFL, being that he was going to be in more complex systems for the most part. Despite the fact he had high upside, he was still a very big project, and I guess a lot of teams didn't want to take a gamble on a project like Malik Willis for the most part. He would end up being drafted in the third round by the Tennessee Titans, as I said, and he started a few games for the Titans in 2022. But looking at Malik Willis' play, he was pretty much a really bad passer, but he was a really good runner, and that's pretty much all he was good at for the most part. In his first start against the Chiefs, he went 5 for 16, 80 yards, 80 yards, 80 yards, 80 yards. 80 yards. no touchdowns, no interceptions. 
He ran the ball a lot though, but like I said, his passing was pretty much his big flaw. And he would start a few games against Houston, but for the most part, like I said, passing continued to be a problem for him. He, this guy was just simply not a good passer for the most part. He didn't throw a single completion on the deep ball, and for the most part, he didn't throw anywhere good outside of 10 yards for the most part. A vast majority of his passes pretty much were short passes. He was pretty much dinking and dunking for the most part. So it's really no surprise that the Titans in 2023 drafted Will Levis. And that's why they wanted him to be the starter over Malik Willis in 2023 after Tannehill got hurt. Malik Willis is probably either going to be cut or traded for the most part. Like I said before, he doesn't have the talent necessary to be the quarterback in this league. Like I said, a very bad passer. And he's just good at running for the most part. It's not a knock on him. It's just true, honestly. And the backup they have right now, Mason Rudolph, is better than him. So I don't see any reason why he'll be on this team next year for the most part. In my opinion, by the end of the preseason, he's going to be cut. I was one of those guys that was really high on Malik Willis, but looking at it now, that is one of the one things that I regret being high on, and that is one of the reasons now that I analyze quarterbacks more, you know, in depth now, so I don't make mistakes like this once again. The second to first quarterback taken in the 2022 NFL Draft would be Cincinnati quarterback Desmond Ritter. Now, if there was one quarterback that I was necessarily never high on was Desmond Ritter for the most part. I always was never crazy about his arm strength. I always thought he had a very okay arm at best. Nothing too crazy. I saw some people saying he had a really good arm. I never saw that in him for the most part. And his mobility was okay, but nothing I was really crazy about in my opinion. Now, the Falcons would commit to Marcus Mariota during the 2022 NFL season. So, Desmond Ritter would not see any playing time until the end of the season or towards the end of the season for the most part. Then before the 2023 NFL season, the Falcons had a chance to possibly get Lamar Jackson, but Arthur Blank would come out and say that they would, did not want Lamar Jackson. And boy, yo oh boy, would that slap him in the face real quick. Lamar Jackson went on to win MVP. Desmond Ritter, on the other hand, went on to throw for over 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. And he also got benched for Taylor Heineke. And his job is officially gone. He just got traded to the Cardinals, where he'll most likely be a backup in the Falcons signed Kurt Cousins. And during his 2023 NFL season, he was pretty much what I thought he was. Like I said, the turnovers weren't a problem in college. That became a problem in the NFL, playing against obviously more complex teams. Not to mention, very bad decisions and terrible pocket awareness. This guy was pretty much bad at every level he wanted to play. And I kind of see why Matt Collins was about to beat you up during the game. Okay, that was pretty much too much. That was too far. But, you know, I'm not really surprised that Desmond Ritter kind of ended up the way he did. Then we finally get to the first quarterback taken in the 2022 NFL Draft. Out of Pittsburgh, taken by the Pittsburgh Steelers, Kenny Pickett. Now, Pickett would have his struggles in 2022, you know. What a rookie should do for the most part, playing in 13 games, threw over 2,000 yards, 7 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. He mostly got better towards the end of the season though, having some really good games against the Raiders, the Ravens, and the Browns. Now after balling out in training camp and practice, a lot of people thought Kenny Pickett for the most part was going to break out and have a really good year. However, he would struggle still in 2023, passed over 2,000 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions. But in week 13, Kenny Pickett would suffer an injury that would put him out for the Cardinals game. He would then undergo surgery to put him out for a couple games after that. Now, he was listed as active in week 18. However, Mason Rudolph was out playing Kenny Pickett, so the Steelers decided, yeah, you're not coming back in, you're done for the rest of the season. Now, despite Kenny Pickett's clear struggles, they were expecting to have him compete for the starting job with their new quarterback, Russell Wilson, and there maybe could have been a chance that he wins this job, but he didn't want to compete, I guess, because he was just traded to the Philly. Now, as Eagles I said before, a they were expecting pick. to have Kenny Pickett compete for the starting job, so why was he traded from the Pittsburgh Steelers despite the fact he was going to compete for the job? Now, it was said that Kenny was completely okay with competing with the starting job for the most part. However, it was revealed later on that Pickett himself was the one that requested a trade from the Steelers. So, he was fine, but all of a sudden, once Wilson became official and he signed with the Steelers, he just crashed out, I guess, and said he wanted a trade. Just a really weird 24 hours for the Steelers for the most part. 
So if you really think about it, Pickett just kind of screwed himself over because he went from having a chance to start with the Steelers to now having no chance whatsoever to take the starting job from Jalen Hurts because he's on a huge contract. So there's no way he's going to take the job over Jalen Hurts regardless of what happens during the preseason, during the all season, unless an injury happens for the most part. So I don't really know what the issue was here for the most part, but it's definitely not the best move you can make in the long run for your career for the most part because you were going to have a chance. You were going to have a chance, but now with the Eagles, you have no chance to start there, let's be honest. But who knows, we could see a surprise. Personally, I wouldn't mind Kenny Pickett starting for the Eagles. You know why I'm saying that, but I'm going to chill out. But that's pretty much all it is here. So let's keep it a buck. The 2022 quarterback draft class was nothing short of a crap show outside of Brock Purdy to this point. Some of these guys may have chances in the future to start, but right now, a vast majority of these guys are backup quarterbacks. This draft class was a total crap show when you look at it now. Maybe there's a good reason why this draft class didn't get a lot of hype in 2022. Maybe the analysts knew something we did. Maybe the GMs knew something we did. Or maybe these quarterbacks do have talent maybe they do by a chance and they just haven't had the chance to show it quite yet even though it's been almost four years now let's be honest but like i said before this draft class has been nothing short of a huge failure to this point and right now the only outlier with this class is obviously brock purdy the rest of these guys though er, yeah bad I'm praying the 2024 NFL draft class does not end the same way this draft class does, but I don't think it will. Knock on wood. Most of us knew this draft class was pretty suspect to begin with, but I don't think anybody could predict it. It would have ended up this bad. 